Welcome back to the We Are Here podcast. I'm Paul. And I'm Tony. We're so glad that you're here with us today. And today we have Jeremy Palm, the city engineer for the city of Streeter. We're excited to have Jeremy as our guest. Uh, Jeremy is somebody who has a lot of energy for our city and, and is uh, just a, an optimist. And it was so good to uh, to have him join us. Uh, just it, really his mission aligns with our mission, which uh, is, is to let our city have a voice. So we're here to celebrate Streeter. Uh, to give our city a voice by letting our people tell their stories. And, and uh, Jeremy is born and raised in Streeter, somebody who has that connection. Uh, we're here to build bridges by connecting with leaders in the community. Jeremy certainly fits that bill, and we're here to celebrate who we are and where we're going. And, and as somebody that has a finger on the pulse of the future of our city, Jeremy, is uh, as our city engineer, is in the very middle of that. So. Yeah, it was so cool to talk to him, uh, to talk to somebody that has, uh, like you said, a pulse on on our community, but also uh, huge knowledge on the nuts and bolts yes. of how all of that works. Um, I could have talked to him for another two hours. Yeah. It yeah. was incredible. Um, so I hope you guys enjoy this podcast. Uh, Jeremy Palm is a really nice guy, and it was awesome talking to him. Uh, so uh, enjoy this uh, next episode, and uh, we'll catch you on the next one. Welcome back to the We Are Here podcast, uh, and we're here with our guest, Jeremy Palm from the city of Streeter, our city engineer. Uh, welcome, Jeremy. Thanks for, for joining us. Thanks for having me. Uh, we're excited to have you. Uh, again, just another piece of the, the puzzle of what makes our city uh, great as far as working for the, uh, for the city, and, and our infrastructure, of course, is so important, and, and we'd love to hear some of those things uh, of what keeps the city running, maybe behind the scenes uh, a little bit today. Uh, but uh, we, we want to give you a chance to, to add some things here in a moment. But uh, the reason why we wanted to invite you on, um, so I, I know from, you know from other, other people talking about you in all good, great, all good ways that you have a great <laughs> insight on, on that behind the scenes the infrastructure, what keeps the city moving forward. Uh, and then so we know, you know, uh, you know, we know nothing about engineering at all, so you're going to have to fill <laughs> us know in on those, on those parts. But I um, set these microphones up <laughs> like this is a pretty, pretty it, big. It, yeah. it looks yeah. pretty. It's, it's yes. intricate. It looks like yeah. engineering feat. That's right. But, but but there are a lot of aspects of your job that most citizens probably never even think of, and and yet it affects their everyday lives. And so, uh, so we, I'm personally fascinated by by that side of things, and then also uh, you know, I've seen you serve uh, at the Salvation Army uh, bell ringing dinner. Of course, we're in the, working in the kitchen yep. together, and uh, you know I know from from Jessica Pastrick, who serves with you on the Salvation Army uh, team, that um, that you and your family are very well involved in serving the community, and so we want to hear about that aspect of your life too. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so plus you're fun to talk to. So, <laughs> so I'll talk we'll with, find so. out. I said that. <laughs> so. Uh, so as we said, before we get started with what you do, let's talk about who you are. So um, tell us tell us a little bit about yourself, um, you know, your connection with Streeter, uh, you know, about your family, whatever whatever you would want people to know about who who is Jeremy Palm. All right. Well, first, yeah, thanks for having me. I'm, yeah. I'm glad to be here. Honored to you guys would include me in this. I said, I, I think you're probably scraping the bottom of the barrel, but, uh, <laughs> but I'm glad to be here. But anyway, uh, so yeah, uh, Jeremy, I, I said I was born... Uh, at St. Mary's here at the, at the hospital here in town, but I uh, grew up in the suburb of Winona. Oh. So we were booming over there. Metropolis. Yeah, the booming metropolis <laughs> of Winona. So yeah, yes. I, I grew up over there. Uh, so attended school over there. I graduated from Fieldcrest and went down to uh, University of Illinois. So I was a U of I grad. Uh, uh, met my, my wife's from Toluca. Uh, so uh, Beth Cassidy, Beth Palm now, but we uh, uh, were together and then moved out to uh, California. So spent some time in California. Uh, right out of college uh, as an engineer out there working for the Department of Transportation out there. and wow. That had to have been pretty much the same as growing up yeah. here. Oh, exactly yeah. the same. Yeah, Which, no. I said, where's a kid from Winona going to go? Los Angeles. Yeah. There yeah. you go. And <laughs> where are you going to live? Sunset Boulevard. I there said, you if go. I'm sure. going, I'm going all the way. Pretty so, much identical. Yeah, yeah, it's the same place. So uh spent a few years out there and, and uh, got a lot of experience. It was good. And then uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger threatened to fire me. So oh. that was during the whole recall. So that's a, that's a fun story I like to tell. So nice. I got a letter signed by Arnold Schwarzenegger said, saying I, I was going to be let go. Do you have oh. that framed? I, I, I should. I should put it out. But no, I still, it, it's in a drawer. I just like to talk about it. But there was a budget crisis. He became the governor and all that stuff. And they never did lay anybody off. But I left anyway, went to a private company and uh, got transferred back to the Chicago area. 
And then uh, got back, so I'm, I'm skipping over the whole thing, but wife and I got married, so we, uh, Beth and I got married, and now we have four kids. Awesome. So uh, all, all, I got three high schoolers and one in eighth grade right now, so interesting time in our house. But, yeah. Uh, so that was it, working in Chicago, and then uh, Monster.com was uh, the thing for resumes back in the early 2000s, and I uh, had my resume out there and got a, a ding that Streeter was looking for somebody, so uh, I was working in Oak Brook and came down and interviewed, and been here since 05 now. So, nice. Yeah. But came back home. Came back home. So that's, it was. We were looking, thing, looking yeah. to come back home and uh, been happy ever since. So it's been Great. good. Great. Well, thank you so much for sharing that. And, um, you know, I, I, again, just want to talk about you personally. Uh, what are some of the areas that you that you currently or in the past have served in in the area? I know, like we said, yep. Salvation Army, you and your wife, I know, are very involved in some of those charities. And yeah, so, like uh, so my wife's actually the executive director of the United Way. So yeah. that was actually so uh, she got on over there and stuck me on a committee and then talking to uh, <laughs> to Judy Booz, I guess, who's been on the show. So I, And then she said, hey, we need somebody on, on the board over there or to help out on the board. So... I, she was asking, and I said, "Sure, I'd love to." And I've uh, been on that for a couple of years now, and uh, doing the bell ringing and and all the things we uh, uh, the the less glamorous things like moving for, moving freezers and stuff for the uh, food pantry and all those things. But uh, glad to serve there. And uh, we're wife and I and the kids were members of a church over Winona, so we help out over there. And right. uh, but yeah, so, and then just from the city, as you know, working for the city, I get uh, sent to a lot of. Uh, Different thing. I've, all the groups you guys have talked about, I've I've sat in on all those meetings and tried to help however I can. So, uh, you know, the chamber of commerce and the food truck festivals and all those things. Try to be around for those and uh, fill in as needed. I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Well, thank you for serving in all those areas. And um, so, of all the things that you've seen of Streeter, you know, having lived here in the area. Um, you know, being born here, moving away, seeing kind of the West Coast, seeing Chicago area, um, coming back home. So you have a pretty good perspective of um, the, I know we joke, it's not the same as Sunset Boulevard, but <laughs> it, obviously. It's not that far but, off, right? Yeah. So, yeah. But, but people are people everywhere. Yeah. But so what do you, what do you love about Streeter? What was good? What was so good about coming back home that you cherish? What do you, what do you love most yeah. about being back here? It is. It's just the lifestyle and the people. I said the people are the biggest thing in Streeter. I said uh, you can meet everybody. There, there's people that have been here their whole lives, and just the various things like this whole podcast is about about the things that people do here. I mean, we you can. Uh, I my uh, I joke with my aunt all the time when I first started and kind of got into Streeter and everything is you can get anything in Streeter mm-hmm. or find someone to do anything. I mean, uh, you know, people are, Oh, I got to drive here. I got to drive. I said, no, you don't just, if you ask people around, you'll find somebody or be able to go to a store and buy it. Yeah. And so, yeah, from, you know, we have chocolatiers and coffee, you know, makers and all the way up to people that make, you know, parts for their, uh, uh, nuclear reactors. I yeah. mean, so it's just, it, it's the people in town and, and their various stories. So, yeah. Yeah, and willing to serve the yes. hard workers. Yeah, um, and so so yeah, I I had that similar experience of moving away for eleven years and then coming back home. And um, I don't know, it's it's there's something different here. You know, it it is that small town. Um, I don't know what to call it. That yeah. that uh, that gusto. Yeah, it's, small a, it's, town it's a small gusto, town feeling. You know, like, yeah, like, yeah, and, you, like know, you can do anything you want yeah, here. I mean, yeah, we're really going to, we're going to pull ourselves up by our bootstraps and we're going to make it happen. Yep. That type of thing. So, uh, that's no matter great. how hard the scramble. Yeah, so, exactly. Say, so. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Uh, well again, thank you for sharing a little bit about yourself. Anything else that you want to add before we start talking about your work or, uh, uh no, just, I said, yeah, that we're back in the area and happy to said, it's happy to be here. And, uh, I chose to come back, wife and I, to come back and raise four kids. So it yeah. is. It's uh, we live outside of town. Uh, so I grew up in the metropolis of Winona. So I didn't live on, but my wife grew up on a farm, and so now I've got uh, pigs and sheep and uh, cattle out there. And uh, my job is to build fences and uh, and keep them in, and then the, yeah. the kids do the rest for 4-H. So that's nice. a whole different type of engineering. Yeah. yeah so yeah, yeah, it's it's a whole other thing, and and the animals are sometimes a lot smarter than me. So. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> motivated animals yes, yeah yes <laughs> that's great okay so let's let's focus on your work then um so what what do you do in layman's terms describe your work um you know what is what is a, a city engineer and what do you do what does your department do uh yeah. that what do you guys focus on so uh so uh, my department the engineering department we uh, where we oversee the you know planning design and construction of all the major capital projects here in town so i have to say you know 
the, the, the work of the engineer is, uh, for the civil engineer anyway, is uh, to keep uh, civilization going. Yeah. I said, uh, people get real uncivilized when the sewers don't work and the waters don't work, and, <laughs> uh, and rightfully so. So yeah. it's just, uh, but yeah, so that's basically, uh, uh, Streeter is unique, and that's another thing I like about my job is that uh, we're, it's a small town, so it is kind of uh, all, there's just a couple of us doing it, uh, myself and, and Jeff Long, uh, and then the other people at the city hall. But uh, so we, you know, the city council kind of comes up and says, you know what? Do you, what are the plans? So we have to lay out the five-year and ten-year plans for what the roads and sewer networks are going to look like. And so we say, here's our planning for that. And then we go out and we, uh, you know, we're soup to nuts and we survey and we design. And I'm the uh, registered engineer, so I design them and stamp them, and then we put them out to bid. And then we get to come around and watch them get built. So and find out how good our plans were. And sometimes, <laughs> and sometimes my my plan need, needs some adjustment in the field. But uh, so it so yeah, it is. It's uh, but in layman's terms, it's it's building the roads, the sewers, uh, working with the water company on the water mains. Uh, our city sewer plants, a big thing, is going down there. That was something I never. I never uh, envisioned when I was going to school how much time I'd spend at a sewer plant. Yeah, but uh, home away from home. Yeah, I'll say, <laughs> and you can ask if you ever see my wife. Ask. I've spent a couple nights overnights down there oh my. on, on oh different my. times when there's things going on. So I uh, never thought I'd do that either. But but it, yeah, and labor service basically it's just the uh, making sure the infrastructure of Streeter is moving in there is up is is expanding and being uh, kept up. Yeah. So there you go. If you drive or drink water or make waste <laughs> or or live uh, or live <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. It's, it's, it's the stuff you don't think about but it's there so yeah. i mean yeah and i yeah have to then work you, with everybody you can to make jeremy yep. and his team yeah, oh, yeah. exactly oh, yeah. so uh, yeah thank you thank you for that um so so of course it kind of answers the question a little bit but um why is why is engineering and infrastructure so important and to the well-being of the daily lives of the citizens so you answer that a little bit in in saying just saying what you do but uh, maybe maybe some things that people don't think of. Um, so let's let's focus on you know what are the what are the problems that arise that people don't think about you know that um, that arise from infrastructure and driving and you know people will see a pothole in the road or like yeah. oh just fix the roads yeah. but you know maybe what are the things that we don't think about that that become issues that happen when engineering is not at the forefront of, yeah. of, of our thinking. It, it is. It's just, the, you know, the inconvenience of, of uh, daily life that sometimes, you know, you don't, you don't think about. The stuff that I, I consider all the time is underground. So it gets buried and people kind of forget that, uh, that those pipes are down there. But uh, so it's just that, and it's the planning that, you know, they, they're disappeared and they're out of sight, but it doesn't mean you can forget about them. Sure. So it's uh, worrying about the uh, stormwater and the sanitary flows and everything. And Streeter's a unique town. I, I learned early in, early in my time here about the uh, combined sewer system and the mm-hmm. mines and all those things. And and so uh, we were working on trying to, uh, it's something you don't, you don't think about, but uh, the combined sewer system in Streeter that was put in, you know, when the town was uh, being built, is that the storm and sanitary sewers were all flowing in the same pipe, mm-hmm. which was a common practice back then. But uh, during big rains, they get overwhelmed, and you can have issues with uh, discharges into creeks and uh, or into basements. You know, on the worst case scenario. So, we've been working hard to try to uh, separate those things so that residents don't have to think about it. You know, there's a lot of people that uh, we've done sewer projects in, in the neighborhood that had backup for for years. We do that do a project, and that's what I is really cool and uh i know there's more to go but there's uh that you can do one and then they don't have to think about backup anymore we did a whole subdivision on the uh southeast corner of town that every time it rained a little bit they would have backups and those things and uh we put in a sewer system out there and now uh the couple of the the ladies have told me like we couldn't sleep when it rained we would just be terrified of, of finding an issue and now you can sleep all night. So oh. it's just, yeah. yeah. So it's, it's just thinking about the stuff that you don't see and uh, to make life easier for, every, for everybody. Yeah. I mean, so if you have to deal with water and, and, and a mess and all those things, it doesn't, uh, it, it's added things in life that you don't necessarily yeah. need. Yeah, so. it makes everything harder for yeah. you. Yeah, especially, well, and you mentioned, I'm, I'm sure there were some elderly people in there, maybe yeah. some people with, some people with disability. You know, I think for, for us that, you know, I've I've had to clean the sewer out of a basement before, and it's miserable yes, enough it's for me, fun. an no, able-bodied, yeah. you know, able-bodied, you know, middle-aged guy, and and 
I can't imagine dealing with that when you're when you're older or when you're when you live alone, things like that. You know, just yeah, it's not not it's the worst fun, phone call so. I get when somebody says because it, it, it'll never go away, but we're trying to make it better. So, yeah, I mean, sure. It, it, you know, freak accidents happen and and lines break right. underground, and so you know, like you see it in the winters with water mains, especially. But you know, freezing thaw. We're in Illinois, yeah. so so uh, dealt with seismic in California, and here you got to deal with uh, freezing thaw. So, yeah. Well, it's work that's never really done. Yeah, it's, yeah, just it's always something new. And I, I imagine you have to think a lot in a, a, a preventative mindset. Like it's not like there's not a problem with this right now, but in five years there probably is going to be. So we need to deal with it now rather than later. Yep. Which is probably kind of hard to sell sometimes. It, and it is. And so yeah, and getting people to think about it and go. Oh, okay, we do want to, in the city councils, that we should put resources towards that because it is something that will affect the citizens, yeah. you know, or the residents eventually. So yeah, yeah. Hmm. Hmm. So is that is that kind of that big picture? Is that kind of what drew you to your work? You kind of going back a second yeah. to 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 your story and and your connection to your job. Is that what drew you to engineering in the first place? Is that or, or what drew what you to it? Yeah, uh, yes, and so basically, I said I as a kid, I, and that's. Uh, Streeters allowed me the opportunity. I used to just like to build Legos and play in the dirt. And I used to, out in the sandbox, I'd build tunnels and run water and all that <laughs> stuff. And I just, I was always interested in that type of stuff. And as I got older, I was, I was uh, good in math. So they always said, you should be an engineer. And I said, oh, oh okay, I'll go that, <laughs> that route. And so, and, uh, you know, then what type of engineering? And I like being outside and, yeah. and doing and dealing with those things. So it was you know, I didn't want to be uh, mechanical, and plus that was a lot more math than I wanted to. <laughs> so I, I do enough, and so that was. But uh, so yeah, to be outside and work on those things, and uh, and then we take family vacations around. You know, when I was a kid, we'd drive everywhere, and uh, I was always interested on in interchanges, and like just, it just kind of you know fascinated me. Or I was, I I'd, I'd like to go over bridges and stuff like that, and so it just all kind of built to the fact that yeah. I said, hey, maybe I, this is something I should look into, and. So and the rest, I guess, is history. Seeing so. how it all works behind the scenes, yeah, yeah, yeah kind of just, kind of and just to be involved in helping create those things. Uh, yeah. So good. So how have you seen? You talked a little bit um, about the impact that it makes on the lives of the citizens you're doing your work. Um, as far as your connections to the community, and and you you addressed this a little bit, you know, moving freezers for people or or you know things <laughs> like that. How how do you see your connections making Streeter a better place through? Your work with the city, but then also the, the organizations that you're connected with. Yeah. How do you see all that coming together to for the it's better just, of the it's city? Just, it's just uh, for anybody just to get involved. It's a great town, and and all those things. And as you, if you can help, I always I try to. I mean, so that's if you can help anywhere. That uh, but my connections to the town, like I said, I've got uh, uh, my wife's got family here. My parents actually, uh, dad. Uh, worked at Owens, uh, so he was uh, an Owens employee until CAD opened up in the late seventies, and so they they lived over on Riverside until uh, he moved. They got the job at Pontiac, and then they moved out to the suburbs to Winona, and and had me. So there you go. <laughs> but uh, so uh, my parents lived here, and then uh, wife's got family still over here. Uh, my mother in law used to work at the hospital, so yeah. you know everything was. We were you know close to Streeter, so it was all always tied to Streeter. I mean, so yeah. it always uh, came back, but. Uh, so yeah, I just I hope that you know just in in doing the work that I I try to uh, trying to do, and if somebody asks for help on a committee or something like that, that we can all work together to move it ahead. So yeah, it seems like um, you know we're when you first came in, we we're we were naming names and you know things like that. It's like oh yeah, I, you know it seems like you're familiar with every name I said, and <laughs> and so um, you know I imagine there's there's that sense of um, the community has to trust what you do, you know, and so I'm, does that, does that help knowing it, a lot it, of people, you know? It's like, a, yeah. You know. It could, because then I said that I, I make a joke sometimes too, about part of my job is just having my phone yeah. and over, I said over, I've been here since 05 and just building of who to call. Yeah. I said, uh, contractor wise, or, you know, if there's a, something going on is, is knowing who to call and, and who to reach out to, to for the help that, yeah. that is needed. So, uh, it's I said, and there's, there's always somebody in Streeter willing to help and, and right. knows we've done that before, we can do it again, and all those things. Yeah, so. that's great. That's great to hear about those connections and and people willing to help. You know, that's that's one thing that we said we said before that that this is a, a helping city. This is a, a serving city. You know, and so uh, it's good to see that those are connections it's, it's, that are, it's throughout are benefiting town. It's, it's so many people. Yeah. yeah. Um, so let's let's kind of talk about challenges. And actually, I want to go back a little bit um, 
you'd mentioned the mines. Yep. And so we, we had Dave Reed on a few weeks ago and, and he kind of talked about how Streeter was literally born out of the minefield, yep. <laughs> out, of the, out of the mines, minefields. That's, <laughs> the, that's the wrong term, wrong kind of mine. It's a different, <laughs> it's a different mine entirely. <laughs> we're not, we're not going to edit that out. No, yeah. no, <laughs> it's gonna stay that's there. there to stay. Yeah, there you go. But, uh, but born out of the mines. Yep. And, and so, um, you know, I'm sure, you know, the, the combined sewer, the, the things going in the mines, so when we think about challenges, I'm sure a lot of those come from history, you know, from, from the old ways of doing things. Yeah. But uh, could you just talk about some of those things? Uh, what are some things that are maybe left over that made us who we were, who we are, uh, and, and built the city up, but, but maybe some things that you're dealing with on a day-to-day basis that are challenges that you and your team are trying to overcome now? What are some of those things that Again, maybe yep. people don't even think about you know. Oh, so, and that's so, and it is. Uh, and the, the the people that came first and found a town, and uh, you know, uh, you know, Ralph Plum, and then uh, I'll uh, plug for the first city engineer was Fred Renz. So Fred Renz uh, came was came out of that. He was a coal uh, coal engineer, coal mining engineer, and they brought him up above ground and said, "You want to be our?" <laughs> uh, kind of started with Ralph Plum, as I know Dave talked about, you know, laying out town, and I've seen the plats, and they were signed by Ralph Plum and all those things, and then he brought on Fred Renz, and. Uh, they started to you know, lay in the sewer systems and the roads and the bridges. And I think uh, uh, Fred, Fred's, uh, what his first big job was the, uh, uh, it's either the Main Street or the Bridge Street. I think it's the Main Street Bridge because Bridge Street was, of course, named that was the bridge. Mm. And they built the second bridge over on Main. Uh, so, but where was I going with that? I don't even remember now. <laughs> but uh, so, but uh, the point was that uh, they built a foundation for town. And so, and a lot of those things, they they built them so well that they're still in service. We're actually, we have a project that's going to happen next year. We're going to uh, uh, line. So they, they put a, a epoxy resin liner. I'm going to get off on a tangent here to, to, <laughs> to line a sewer to, to increase its, uh, its uh, lifespan. So okay. you can just, uh, without digging up the road, you yeah. can uh, install a liner. But we're going to line about 1,400 feet, the last 1,400 feet of brick arch sewer and streeter. Hmm. So... Uh, uh, there's a thinking about things that you know we started planning for this project a couple of years ago. There's a brick arch sewer uh, down on uh, Vermilion Street that the first time uh, the oldest map I have was uh, drawn in 1894 uh, wow. and it says existing. Wow! So that that sewer was you know one wow. of the one of the original ones put in and it's uh, still in service. Wow! And so uh, we're going to be. Uh, and and no reason to uh, to dig it up. We can do this procedure and and not have to dig up the roads and yeah. so. Uh, Coming out of the coal mines, you know they they build a city that has survived for one hundred you know one hundred twenty five or fifty years here. So wow. uh, those are the, yeah, those are the the things that are uh, the challenges, I guess. And uh, going back is that is to uh, to extend those things and and try to do as good a job as they did. Uh, so there's stuff that's down there and that needs to be addressed. And the challenges are just how to integrate the new world with. Uh, so every time we dig a hole now, it's a lot harder. There's a lot more gas mains and fiber optics and yeah. telephone lines and power lines all buried. So uh, those are the challenges. And as the city grows, which is good, uh, that those things are happening. We got a fiber optic project going right now, so everybody in town will get uh, fiber optic. Have the option for fiber optic internet at home. So. A uh, couple of different companies, actually, so you'll have some choice even. So, yeah. But as those things uh, get installed, it's just the challenges of making sure that uh, what's down there doesn't get disturbed and, and we're adding on in a responsible way, I guess. Yeah. Do you, I mean, do you, when you, I mean, I don't know if you think this way or not, but do you think of the projects that you do of, in terms of, um, you know, I hope this lasts 150 years. Oh, yeah. Or, yeah. Or, you know, what, what is that like? I mean, it's, you know, it, it's gotta be a unique perspective of thinking, uh, you know, there are going to be generations of people that are going to use this, this, whatever I'm building, you know, this thing that I'm putting in installing or whatever, um, that I'm never going to meet, yeah. you know, and, and there's gotta be some satisfaction. To that, there right? is. I you said, know? yeah, that I, I said, I, 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 we strive to try to do as good a job as, yeah. as the ones that did. And, uh, so and then, cause I, I said, as I started here in Streeter and I started, you know, you got to go, you have to look back to see where it's going to go. And you start seeing the same names. Like I said, I bring up Fred Renz and, and yeah. some of the others and, uh, their names are still on these things. And, uh, so I just think that that's, that's cool. Every time I put a set of plans in a drawer that after it's <laughs> done being built, I file it away and my name's on it. And I think that's, yeah. that's a unique thing and that's kind of fun. So. That's great. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. What a, what a fulfilling, you know, meaningful thing, part of your job, yeah. you know, that, 
uh, generations are going to be impacted by it. That's yeah. that's great. Um, are there any other challenges or roadblocks that you see that maybe maybe we haven't talked about? You know, we talked about the mines. We talked about um, you know the infrastructure things. So any other roadblocks that that kind of prevent us from moving forward or what are the challenges moving forward that maybe we haven't talked about, or maybe you haven't heard anybody talk about yeah. on the podcast yet. Uh, it, it's, it's the challenges of everywhere. It's just, you know, it's uh, as things get more complicated and, and uh, it's the cost of things and trying to keep, uh, you know, keep uh, building the infrastructure and maintaining it uh, with dealing with, you know, the, the costs, the rising costs of, of doing it. Uh, so I think Streeter does a very good job. We go after a lot of grants. So I, I was, yeah. uh, I try to uh, work with the council and, and get as much, um, uh, money from that stuff as we can to try to keep these things, uh, funded and, and moving ahead. So that's where the planning comes in. If you can know five years that you're, you're going to be working on a sewer project and you can start going after sewer grant money or there's money like at the incubator. So that's another, you know, it's kind of a, an offshoot. And that's what's, I, I guess I'm getting off topic, but about my job specifically is that Streeter's allowed variety. I mean, all the things that they've, they've kind of allowed me to do is work on, you know, project management for an incubator project that's going to be, you know, putting in, you know, uh, 3D printers and laser yeah. and laser cutters and all those things. And, uh, but those are the challenges and just, uh, but there, but there are challenges everywhere. Yeah. And I think Streeter's can meet them and, and move ahead and, uh, and the other thing, yeah, just uh, the technology as it changes, bringing in fiber optics and all those things, yeah. and and working with the the private utilities to maintain all that stuff and and keep Streeter where it needs to be so it can uh, keep going. Yeah, so I can't I can't imagine the the shift in technology even from two thousand and five to now, the the push for technology has been so huge, just in terms of how you do things, how things are manufactured, uh, where you can get components like that had to, that's gotta be a constant learning thing for you just in your job. Cause you've got to, you've got to lay out all these projects, but then you have to use the best sort of technology to be able to get those done. And that's changing. So, Oh yeah. So, so said, much. Yeah. I said, I, I, I talked about it for, I think two weeks to, to my wife and, and, and kids and they kind of rolled their eyes. But I, I, said, <laughs> I, I, I go to conferences and things to, you know, to keep up on the technology and just right. the, the smart infrastructure and electric vehicles and uh, the university of Illinois is building a huge facility to test those things. And uh, like the sensors in roadways and uh, you know, uh, in road charging. So, you know, everybody's worried about where you're going to charge them. There's tests out there to where you can charge as you drive. You would never even have to plug it in. Wow. And then just all the, and, uh, you know, everybody talked about it. So I went to this conference, they were talking about all these things, but there were rocks that with computer sensors and you could pave them into the, into the concrete or the asphalt. You don't have to do anything special, just throw them in. And, and, and it would give you real time data on traffic. Uh, they had a, where, uh, different ones could integrate and you could heat railways so you wouldn't have to put salt down. Wow. And so wow. it's just, it's, so all that technology is out there and it's, it's, you know, that's the exciting stuff about the engineering side of things is where it's going and, and how it all works with the, uh, you know, as we move forward with uh, everybody, always talked about uh, drones and all, and Amazon and how they get delivered by drone. And part of this thing was uh, the road sensors would tell, you know, would would help uh, navigate that network. And I said I saw a video and well, how are the drones going to get that far? And it was a semi truck automated driving down the road, and the drones were on the back. And as it got to a stop sign, they take off, make deliveries, and land again. So the truck kept moving and the drones just went to the truck. So it was just, and so that's a big, you know, kind of in the futuristic type yeah. of things, but there are people working on it. And those technologies like the, the uh, sewer lining, that's a, you know, technology that was developed, you know, 40 years ago, but yeah. it's being more widely used. And so it's just how to see those things uh, develop and yeah. as, as I, as they go along and they don't all work, but eventually some you might yeah. become commonplace. So the, the, so not to not to go back too far, but I've I've seen the sewer lining done when we lived in Havana, in Havana. Yep. They were doing that there, and so uh, they were using a Vector truck. Oh yeah, so, yeah, so, yeah. So, yeah. So, that's like made in Streeter. You know, yeah. Uh, yeah. So Streeter product. That's right. <laughs> at work there yeah. in in Havana, Illinois, but yeah, here too. So, um, but yeah, it's it's amazing the the thought that goes into well, it's it's so much easier um, to line this than to dig it up. You know, or I think of, you know, tunneling 
you know, how many, how many years did we see from when we were kids, we saw people, you know, with a, a big, the big chainsaw looking yep. trencher out there and, and digging a big old long trench. And now they just have a machine that pushes it. Yeah. Through, pushes you know? it through. And so it's so much easier to do that yeah. and, and things like that. Just and Sears, as a, a Sears mining history, that was, I, we still have, I have a lot of the, uh, the project diaries. So I have to fill out a diary of what got done every day. And, uh, you go back to those, uh, with the mining, they did a lot of those by tunneling. Yeah. So they put those brick sewers in with a, a crew of guys in there with shovels, and then they'd line it, and then they'd keep you going. And so they didn't have to dig; they yeah. were doing it all underneath your feet. So yeah. that's and and now the bore machines can do all those things too. For, and, yeah, yeah, do it for you, so, yeah. yeah, pretty much. Yeah, that's that's just good ingenuity. Yep. Yeah, that's fantastic. So with that, um, thinking about small towns, not just here, uh, but but small towns in general, how how do you see what do you, what do you see as opportunities for a city like Streeter in the future? Um, what benefit is it to be? Because uh, like when we when we first had the mayor on, um, she talked about some of the some of the benefits as a small town of you know people that may not necessarily want to live in a city, yep. uh, but what do you see as some of our opportunities for our size for our community? Uh, but then also backing it out in general to small towns that that we have in the future in that future that you were just describing. Yeah. So it is. So as technology, you know, binds us all together and uh, and does those things and allows more remote access. I think small towns are in a great position because, again, and, and Streeter, I, I think is unique in a way of all of the just the various people and that have the knowledge to do different things. And so I think uh, Streeter's you know future is is what it does. It's what it's always done is is build things and, and grow and change. And so like Vector and, uh, you know, you got uh, U.S. Truck Body and Sterling LM, they, they build these things that people don't know about here. Mm-hmm. And so, uh, but they ship them all over the world. And so as technology grows and, and hopefully, uh, you know, shipping's a big thing, I know. And But you talk to logistic companies, streeters, it's always, we're not on the interstate. But we're close enough to an interstate for, eight, for, for, yeah. for three of them. Yeah. I said yeah. you've got yeah. 80, 80, 80, 55, and 39 yeah. that you can go anywhere. So I think it's it's just getting people to, as and as the connectivity grows, people understand that more, and, and there are companies that already do. And so I think Streeter's future is, I said, just to keep changing. Like they talked about it. It was cold, and it was glass, and now it, it's, it's manufacturing and, yeah. and, and all those things. And so... It's, I guess I'm cautiously optimistic. I said I, I've been accused of being too optimistic at times, but uh, the the streeter. The, the, I mean, the challenges are the challenges are everywhere. It, it's not unique to streeter. It's it's things that but streeters met those challenges before and can keep doing it. So, yeah. uh, so I think the small town life. I I think will you'll still have the you'll still have the flavor and and the uh, and the benefits of it, but you can connect with the world and, and, and do those things and, uh, but choose to live here because you want to. And yeah. that's, that's a great thing. So I love that. Choose to live here because you want to, that, yeah. that's great. Yeah. That, that is so true. Um, you, yeah. And, and I think, and love the place where you're at. Yeah. You know, just, I mean, whether you're here, whether you're in a big city, you know, Sunset Boulevard or yeah, Main Street, a, USA, it's a, it's you know, a, it yeah. doesn't, doesn't matter. It just, yeah, just love the place that you're yeah. at and, and make it better. Yeah. And I think that's that's kind of the key takeaway. And see the future. So, yeah, yeah. If, you, if there is something that you don't, you know, that you, you'd you like to change, then get involved and you can help change it for the better. So Absolutely. Well, that's a that's a great segue into my last question. So how would you like to see people get involved in Streeter? So um, maybe, I, I don't know. I don't know if you have any job openings or not, but you know, but but just in general, where where would you like to see our citizens get involved? Um, maybe with what you do, but even outside of your work, you know, inside outside your work, where would you like yeah. people to get plugged in? So I will say for for uh, for college kids, high school kids, we have had interns in the engineering department in the past, so I'll throw it out there. If you have interest, contact me at City Hall, and uh, hopefully we can we could you know help you towards a career in construction or engineering or whatever right. the case may be, but. Uh, getting involved is, is really just, uh, I said, getting involved, c- coming to, to, uh, to city for my, for, for me as, as, you know, to start with is coming to city meetings, the, the plan commission, the city council meetings, uh, and just come and listen and then start to, you know, uh, interact and voice your opinions and, mm-hmm. and, uh, and get involved that way. So there's, uh, there's a whole host of the, as they talked about in the other episodes of, of things you can get involved in and. Uh, from the city side, I said just start coming and asking questions and and getting involved and helping to. I, we talk about I talked about the planning of things and being 
in that planning. So we did, I've been here several years now and we've gone through comprehensive plans and, and, and laying out, like we'd like to build a greenway trail. And so that's, that came from the community. And mm-hmm. so it got done. And then, you know, uh, building, uh, you know, Anderson fields, we re- re- remodeled that James street rec area. And it's all those things that when people come in and say, here's, let's do this thing. And then it's part of the, I find it fun to be the one to, to be able to help, move that ahead so yeah. it is just coming to meetings and saying hey what about this and what about this and yeah. and then staying involved too and just and i guess and helping to see it through so yeah. that's so that's the thing and then yeah getting involved you can get involved in whatever you want you just i said and i think i saw the other episodes and they talked about just just call there there is a club committee group that will if you're interested in if you can think it up if you can think it up somebody's doing it doing and it, yeah. and on the odd chance that it's that they're not i guarantee you'll find people that will want yeah. to do it with you so right yeah yeah no that's great i think uh, you you reiterated how important your position is um because anybody can have ideas and and say hey we need to do this but there's got to be some position somebody that says okay i see that i think that's a great idea Let's lay the groundwork on how we can make it happen. So, and that's and that's and uh, it's, that's the city council's uh, here in Streeter. I said uh, my job is just to do what they tell me. So I mean, so so I said I, I you know I, I am I just try to uh, I, I'm there to you know, facilitate, and then they ask questions about the logistics of it. And I can help with those things, but it is it's a it's a community driven vision about how to go and uh, and then. Uh, Go back. It's just when I, when I was hired, uh, Ray Schmidt was the mayor, uh, Mayor Ray Schmidt, and mm-hmm. uh, so he would always talk. That was the thing. People come up with these ideas, and well, we need to do this. And he goes, "Well, that's why we hired you." And so, <laughs> so and it, it would always be like. So I, I'd try to lay out, what, you know, what needed to be done. He said, "Well, that's go, you know." So tell us how, and it was just kind of moving ahead. But uh, but no, the vision and the and the is is the city council and the, and the people of Streeter, and I just said I'm just I'm lucky to help however I can to, yeah. to move that stuff ahead. So awesome. Well, and, and that makes sense. If you think about it, um, you know, they, we've elected them to represent us and to, and to lead our community. And so it is a community wide vision. And, and of course they've hired you to make that happen. And so, yeah, I think, um, yeah, it's, it, it, we've said before, Tony, you said before, it takes community to build a community. And um, from what I see as, as a citizen, if, if our if if we limit our imagination on what we can be, then then what we will be will be limited. Yeah. I think that's that's the reality of it. Is um, you know your your job is is limited to what um, the community will support, what will what will move forward, what will um, get behind as as a whole. And so I think um, that is so true that that we are all in this together. If you want to see street or if you want to see your city, wherever you're from, improve. Um, it does take all of us moving together in the right direction yeah. and together. And, and so it's so important to get involved in that process, that civil process, right. And, and, and being a part of, um, not just being a critic of it. You know, I think it's, it's okay to have a, a, a critical thinking mind oh, yeah. and, and to, to think, well, could this be better? Yeah. Sure. It could. Well, here's how, uh, but get involved in, in less, in, in, sorry, in more, in more than just complaining about things, get involved yeah. in making them better. Yeah. Yeah. What's it's, your idea for making it better? And, right. Right. And, and make it happen. Yeah. Cause I, I mean, um, I think anyone, and I, I, I can't say this with a hundred percent certainty cause I don't know every member of the city council, but I think anyone that sits in that room, uh, they're, they're not, it's not just about their ideas, you know, and it's not just about your ideas yeah. as, as a, a city engineer. Um, and, it's, it's, it's about, it's about us. It's not about me. It's about us, yeah. you know? And so, um, so that's, that's one of the things that excites me is, um, you know, there's, there's all these projects. Uh, I think, I think to Marilla park, I think to the, the water, the water fountains, yep. the, the, the uh, splash pad, you know, all these things that, um, no one person is benefiting from any of those. It's a community benefit. Yep. And, and so those are just great things to see. The greenway trail is another, uh, you know, that another idea that that would benefit the whole community, um, health and wellness and on so oh, yeah. many different levels, uh, you know, it beautifies our, our, our parks and our, our, uh, our neighborhoods and, and just makes the whole city a better yeah. place. So and that's, yeah, that's, I talked about, you know, how much time I spent at the sewer plant. I never thought I would. And, and all the park work that has happened since I've been here because out of the born out of the thing, the community wanted to see it. And like, you know, Spring Lake being a great example of that, the, 
the volunteers did all that. Yeah. And that's, they brought it back. And But every park, I think, in town has been you know, upgraded in the past 10 to 15 years because mm-hmm. the council and the people wanted it and splash pad and all those things. Yeah. And so it is, I didn't, I never thought I'd be, get to be involved in that much stuff in, in parks, which is cool. So Yeah, that's fantastic. Well, uh, anything else that you want to add that we haven't talked about anything we've you forgot about what you do that yeah. you know that we need to, <laughs> we need to no yeah anything that that's just jumps out um thanks for being here with us this is this has really been enjoyable and and i love getting the different perspectives too of of what makes our city work and um you know so i guess last thing is there uh uh any any final thoughts any final words on community anything that you want to say about what makes you great uh just kind of let you finish yeah. this off if that's okay so yeah and that's i said it and i'll just i'll it's the people it's the people of town uh you know uh, for what i do is it's just uh being supportive and coming out i said uh, every i say it every year uh when we do start construction projects on a road or a sewer whatever the case may or even in a park and uh it it, it those things are hard to live through yeah but you know everybody's patience and all those things to uh to help those things. And I hope when we're all said and done that you're happy with them. And if you're not, you know, it, we will learn and try to be better next time. But, sure. uh, so yeah, it, it's just working with the people and seeing, uh, I guess maybe I can, I, I always tell a story of, about a sidewalk. We built a sidewalk on the North end of town, uh, and people were upset. The sidewalk was going in or, or very, were reluctant and said, Oh, I don't want to, my yard, I got to, I got to, uh, you know, shovel it or do all these things. And, uh, Never been a sidewalk there, and then there was two women that lived uh, a door apart, so a house in between them. They were aware that each other existed and had lived by each other for 25, 30 years, and we put in that sidewalk, and they started walking together every day, mm-hmm. and they were both retired, and so it's just, so it's, you know, connecting the people, and like, I know construction is hard to live through, but seeing there, there might be a benefit in the end, so that's, and, and there is a benefit, so that's. That's, I guess, my parting words, I guess. That's, that's good to hear. <laughs> and then last thing, any any projects, any upcoming things that you want people to be aware of? Anything that, um, you know, this kind of thing, a couple months ahead, of course, yep. but, you know, yep. but... but so, uh, so, yeah, so I'll, I'll go into, yeah, the projects for next year. Uh, so we've got uh, uh, our annual road work. So we'll be doing road work around town on, uh, I think we're in the uh, Rue and Grant Street from uh, Bloomington Street over to uh, uh, Van Buren. So we'll be working over in that area Uh we're potentially going to start next fall on I- Iowa Avenue. It's a that's a grant funded project, so we'll be uh, working through the paperwork, and we're hoping to start that next fall. But Iowa Avenue over there uh, from Main Street all the way up to Br- uh, Bronson, so we'll be uh, past the all the warehousing and the old peanut butter factory yeah. and all those things. So that's a big project coming. Kelly Street Bridge. Uh, so that was one that's uh, there was a there's a bridge over on Kelly Street that's been closed since 2016, and we're finally we're working on uh, securing funding and all those things about the planning. So take until 20. 24 now but uh we should see that project going uh and then we'll have we got sewer work down on the south end of town on vermilion street uh work at the sewer plant so we yeah. haven't so so and th- th- that is something cool i said i it, it's i said it's a it is something i'll put a plug out if you know uh, anybody wants to ever come see it call city hall it, it is a unique place and and to kind of see something that you don't see all the time and uh but we have a big a big uh, project going on down there uh so as part of the, you know, the infrastructure bill that got passed, and we're, there's money out there, so we're going to be putting it, replacing some equipment down there and doing those things. And uh, the incubator uh, yeah. project, so that's that another cool project we'll be putting in. I said 3D, 3D printers, laser uh, laser tables, and plasma cutters, and upgrades to the kitchen, and so to grow and have the you know people come up with an idea for business and start it in Streeter, and so. I think that's what I got for right. right now. But well, yeah. thank you for sharing yeah. all that. Yeah, never uh, a dull moment. Is no, it? Yeah. I said it. Yeah. I said it. Just keep when going. So sleep? it's good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, thank you so much for joining us, Jeremy. It's been a pleasure. Right. And uh, yeah, thanks for being here with us. And uh, thanks yeah. for having me. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time. Thank you. Thank you.